Joining me now via Skype is Richard Abulafia. He's vice president of analysis at the Teal Group Corporation, where he analyzes defense and aerospace trends. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, your thoughts on the growth of Chinese made aircraft and its future impact in the country, in the region, and around the world. Well, um, it's sort of early days in the, uh, the long journey of uh, Chinese aircraft uh, manufacturing. Uh, you've got a tremendous market in China. Uh, you've got a tremendous collection of talent, and you've got remarkable resources for uh, jetliner production and design and engineering. Eventually, there's going to be something that happens. I would argue that to be really world class, China needs to think about privatization for its aerospace business, or at least the civil component of its aerospace business. But there's so much talent in such a market that eventually this will become something. Well, as we know, China has this huge One Belt, One Road initiative. How will the aviation industry within the country play a role in the future of China's Silk Road in the Sky, is what they're calling it? Well, I think there are a number of roads it could take. Uh, you know, it could continue with the current path, which is emphasizing individual aircraft, which is going to take a very long time and may or may not succeed. Or it could emphasize uh, being a subcontractor. This is the route Japan has gone down. Japan is now the world's biggest subcontractor and has a huge presence in, in value-added industries such as avionics and composites. And you're starting to see some of this emerge in China, too. Uh, I think it would be good to see China double down on developing these new technologies and playing a greater role in the global aviation supply chain, uh, as well as, of course, uh, continued experimentation in its own aircraft. Richard, there is, though, still a shortage of pilots. So what are some of the other obstacles and challenges for the growing industry in China? Well, certainly pilots are an issue. Uh, obviously, that creates wage inflation, which is something for airlines to deal with. Um, obviously, uh, uh, deregulation of the airspace is a key issue. Uh, dealing with the usual pressures of growth. One thing that's very refreshing about China is just the incredible resources that are being devoted to infrastructure. So you've seen, well, dozens, indeed hundreds of airports uh, being developed over the past couple of decades. And uh, that's something that uh, we in the U.S. can only dream about. We're stuck with the sort of old and somewhat dilapidated facilities that are only very slowly starting to get upgraded. But obviously, keeping that going in terms of infrastructure sustainment, because once you get to a mature system of infrastructure, it's quite another thing to keep it modern. That's a different skill set than, say, developing completely new greenfield facilities. Well, and, and despite all that, China is home to Asia's largest business jet fleet, and that is not likely to change anytime soon. Your thoughts on that? You know, there was a tremendous surge in business jet demand a few years ago, and that seems to have slowed markedly. Uh, there are concerns uh, that perhaps uh, maybe there's a slight chill on the atmosphere for business jet. But there were a couple of years, I believe 2008, 2009, 2010, where the, the jet fleet was growing by double digits. I suspect right now people are taking a cautious look at things, maybe for political reasons, waiting for more of a green light from the government. And then you'll see very strong growth resume, because relative to China's GDP, business jets are actually somewhat underrepresented. There should be significant pent-up demand for business jets. Another challenge is infrastructure, fixed-based operations, just the various facilities that fuel up and maintain and repair business jets, there needs to be a lot more development there, too. And there are a lot of business opportunities associated with this as well. But in the long run, for geographic reasons, for economic reasons, China is going to be one of the very biggest business jet markets in the world. All right. We'll leave it there. Richard Abulafia, thank you so much for joining us.